So I'm Dana Kozlov. Um, I'm currently a reporter at CBS2 in Chicago. Uh, I've been there for 11 years uh, next month. And then prior to that, I worked at WGN Television for about eight years. So I've been in this market for almost 19 years. I'm from the Palatine area. And then prior to that, I started my career in Peoria, Illinois. It was my first job in Peoria, Illinois, um, which, um, to be honest with you, when I was in college, like you guys, I actually <laughs> didn't know what I wanted to do until they made me choose a major my sophomore year. And for various reasons, which I won't bore you with, I applied to the College of Communications because there were um, areas of study that I was interested in, including journalism. And then they said, you have to focus more. And because of, of my curious background and the fact that I liked talking to people and I liked the, the thought of writing and using different mediums, I chose broadcast communications. And then after my senior year, I realized I actually really wanted to do it and then tried to get my first job. So I hadn't, unlike probably a lot of you guys, has, have any of you had internships yet? OK, right. Yeah, I didn't have mine until after college. And I interned at CNN Chicago, learned how to, I did a lot of field producing back then for correspondence, which was fantastic. And, um, and then my first job was in Peoria. And it, was, it took me a while, because I didn't have a very good, you guys call them reels now, maybe? We called them tapes, because they were literally tapes, you know, three quarter inch big old tapes. And, um, uh, and I sent them out. It wasn't all that fantastic. CNN helped me do one, which was really nice. And so my first job was actually as a part-time reporter in Peoria. So I moved down there to make $5 an hour and work 20 hours a week. And then I waitressed on the side for a year. And then they hired me full-time. And then things kind of took off from there. It ended up I loved it, obviously, 22 years later. But, um, and I loved being poor for a while because I did make like $12,000. And I, I looked at it as a challenge, you know. I, I, lived, I lived very frugally, but I looked at it as a challenge um, to get as, uh, to, get as uh, to sharpen my skills and work really hard, and I did. And then hopefully it would pay off. And it has. I, make, I mean, I, I make a good living. But that's something to keep in mind. It's, I would say try to start in a small market, because that's where you learn a lot. I did everything. And, um, and work really, really hard, but be prepared to potentially not make a lot of money. So initially. So every day I go into work. And since I am a general assignment reporter, I either have something I'm working on, or more often than not, I am, we have an editorial meeting and we decide, what am I going to cover today? What are we all going to cover today? Today I already know because I'm going in a little late. Much to my dismay, I am going to have weather duty. I'm going to do the, it's the hottest day of the summer so, so far story, which if I may be bluntly honest with you, is, is intellectually boring as it comes to me, especially 22 years in. That being said, though, it is my assignment. And so it will be up to me to make as snappy and as entertaining a story as I can. Now, of course, there could be some legitimate news associated with it down the line. There could be a heat emergency of some sort, whatever. That changes the tone of everything. We will decide. People will throw out their ideas. We'll talk about what's going on. There's sometimes obvious things you need to follow up on. There's things going on. There's something breaking. There's tips, whatever. And we'll decide what do we need to do today. And then we'll either volunteer or we'll get assigned. And then it's up to me. Sometimes they give me a crazy subject. And I have to figure out exactly what all the nuances are very quickly while setting up interviews. And the goal, of course, is to have a handle on what I'm covering before I go do any interviews. So then I'll start making my phone calls. I'll set people up, or I'll have to hunt them down, depending on the story, and interview them. And then, of course, we go back, and we, we have to figure out what video elements we need. We go back write the story, and then edit it and get it on the air. And, and this is a process that we usually do honestly in four hours or less.
It's as simple as that, but it's every single day. And you really have to work fast. And it really, this is why your experience, especially in a smaller market, um, is so crucial because you have more time and more room for error in a small, smaller market, usually, than you do in a larger market. Because partly, partly because of logistics, partly because just getting around this area to get your interviews takes a lot of time. Yesterday I did a story on this controversy that resulted from a heroin awareness forum in Orland Park. So, and I could show you that story too if you want, but um, it required my reaching out to the village president, school superintendent, the police chief, and the head of the fire protection district, trying to get them all to talk to me, go from Chicago to Orland Park, get them all interviewed, four interviews, shoot our B-roll, get all the in other video I needed, go back to Chicago and get it on the air by six o'clock. So that's what I did. You get used to it, you know? And this is all stuff you, you get used to, but I guess the point is, in television news especially, you have to work fast. And you also cannot have a thin skin in this business. Because unlike maybe sports reporters and weather people and even anchors to a degree who, if they go out into the field, more often than not, they do things that are happier. Soft. Right, soft. <laughs> I've had people threaten to shoot me, and I've had, um, I've had, I've been in a, in a hot, like, gang situation where it's excruciatingly tense. There's a lot of anger at the messenger, and, you know, rightfully so sometimes, absolutely. I'm, I'm not talking about just in a, in, a, in a gang rivalry situation. I mean, sometimes we've done things, not me, I like to think, but that warrant some anger. But overall, we're there to tell a story, whether you think we should be telling it or not. And so I've had, I've had the worst thing, so I've had a lot of hostility. I've, I've dealt with a lot of people's grief. And, um, and that, after two decades plus, that is the worst part of my job. You know, because, of course, one thing you want in any good story is not only for it to be visually powerful um, and have, you know, powerful writing and interesting writing and good interviews, but you also want nat, what we call nat sot. You guys know what natural sound is, right? So you want to be able to pepper it, I think, with some of that if it makes sense and so the, the story sort of sings. And another thing, too, in, at my station at least, I don't know when you guys put stories together, those of you who have, but we have to do all of this and we have to tell all these stories in a minute 10 to a minute 20, which is not a lot of time. And yesterday I shoved four interviews and the context into a minute 15 package. So you do get good at that. You do. You have to learn to be the most concise. There's no fluff. It's not like writing a term, it's not like writing a term paper when you're in high school, you know, where you're like, oh my God, I need 12 pages. I better really embellish the everything I'm trying to say. Yeah, it's the com years ago for me. <laughs> well, well, then maybe you'll be fine. But um, <laughs> you have to, you, you, you learn to bottom line it in the most active and interesting way you can, every single thought. There's no, no room for fluff anymore in television news writing. Not that there really ever was, but now more so than ever.